The revival of Indian culture will be a revival of those true values which they have inherited and safeguarded and which are purified and ennobled by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Through his gospel, Christ confirms the native peoples in their belief in God, their awareness of his presence, their ability to discover him in creation, their dependence on him, their desire to worship him, their sense of gratitude for the land, their responsible stewardship of the earth, their reverence for all his great works, their respect for their elders. The world needs to see these values and so many more that they possess pursued in the life of the community and made incarnate in a whole people. So that medicine wheel, sometimes it's called a sacred hoop, sometimes it's just referred to as a circle. We are told that we all have a medicine wheel inside, one that we can't see. So that medicine wheel provides a holistic way of looking at life, and it helps to discover a pathway of healing. It helps us define how we're going to heal in this life. Meet Rosella Kenoshemeg, one of the leading Catholic Aboriginal elders in Canada. Rosella's workshop on the medicine wheel was one of the highlights at the Directions in Aboriginal Ministry program, co-sponsored by the Building Bridges Project of the Assembly of Western Catholic Bishops, Standing Committee on Aboriginal Affairs, and Newman Theological College. The Directions in Aboriginal Ministry programs are focused on helping those in ministry with Aboriginal people better understand Aboriginal spirituality and culture. An equally important focus is to help Aboriginal faithful better understand what it means to be at the same time authentically Aboriginal and authentically Catholic. This year we did it on the medicine wheel as a foundation because it seems like that we need to understand that kind of foundation before we can move on to other areas. When we come into this world, when we're born, we are given what we call the seven sacred gifts. And we use these as medicine for the well-being of our body, our mind, and our spirit. And the seven sacred gifts that we're given are respect, humility, some places they say compassion, other places they have bravery, honesty, truth, wisdom, and unconditional love. And we have a little... The many decades of work of Catholic Aboriginal elders has taken on a new relevance with the launching of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, or TRC. Through a series of hearings with Aboriginal communities and individuals across Canada, one of the goals of TRC is to bring forward a factual record of the history of the church and government-run residential schools, the abuses that occurred, and the long-term cultural and personal damage that ensued from the schools, and the government policy of assimilation. We need to do a lot now in terms of uh, dialogue with First Nations people in general, on all levels. Uh, and also understanding the culture, the spirituality. It survived. It survived an amazing onslaught of uh, colonization. And uh, I think it behooves all of us to take responsibility for this. TRC was established as part of the court-approved final settlement agreement between former Indian residential school students, along with Aboriginal organizations, and the Government of Canada, as well as the four historic missionary institutions, the Roman Catholic Church, the Anglican Church, the United Church of Canada, and the Presbyterian Church. Above all, 
The purpose of TRC is to chart out a process of healing and reconciliation for both Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal Canadians today. We have not lived out of relationships of equality, of balance, of honouring each other's truth, of, of being open to each other's reality. And the call to us as Canadians to write those relationships is to hear what is the Aboriginal story. It would be at moments when I was with my mother, who was brown and black hair and very obviously native. And there would be looks and stares and we'd be in a grocery store and the cashier might uh, treat her differently than they would, she would be treated if she were white. You know, everybody talks about a lot of abuse in the residential school. For me, it was sort of like I uh, didn't get to know my family. I didn't, you know, I wasn't part of my family celebrations and so I kind of missed out on that kind of stuff when I think about it. We met with 500 former students at residential school. One of the small things they asked, one of the small things they asked was pictures of themselves when they were in residential school. They just wanted to know what they looked like when they were kids. In today's era of truth and reconciliation, the Catholic community involved in healing efforts with its Aboriginal parishioners has come to rely on the ideas of Father Robert Schreiter, whose book, Reconciliation, Mission and Ministry in a Changing Social Order, outlines possible steps in the process of reconciliation. The idea of the residential school, what they were saying is, our way is better, and your way is worse, or bad, evil. And when the people recognize this, then all of a sudden they have to recreate or try to get back to their original truth, or to create a new truth for themselves. I was only 15. <laughs> when I made my decision. I went to a powwow. I went to, I, I danced, me and my sister, we danced. And that was probably my first powwow. And there was an elder that did the invocation, who said the prayer. And the prayer that was said was done in the language. And I thought, oh, is that ever beautiful? beautiful to say a prayer in your language. And then that's when I made my decision that I, I would use my traditional teachings and, and use my language. So that's the whole story of resurrection, because we go through that death and rebirth to a new truth and opening ourselves to forgive opening them to forgive is just always a recreation of a new world. That's reconciliation. Yeah.